The survey is now ready to form a triangulation from the tinnable data displayed in the view. Firstly, go to your plus button and ensure that all the models are turned on. If you were to zoom in to say a tree and turn back on your text, you will notice that the height has NT after it. NT means non-tinnable. So features such as trees, pipes, will not be used in the triangulation. Prior to doing the triangulation, we need to check for any errors in the survey. To check for any crossing brake lines, we will select the option Utilities, Old, Check Brake Lines. The data to check will be View 1 and the model name for intersecting strings will be X Brake Lines. We're going to give it the intersection diamonds a colour, magenta. We're going to clean the model beforehand and we're going to type in a report file, X break lines, and click check. The report file comes up and we're going to exit out of the report and go and locate the problems. If you just leave the panel active, just put it down the bottom of the screen and we'll come back to it when we think we've finished. Click on the plus button and turn on X brake lines. Another way of locating the brake lines is to go to the output window and a green exclamation mark will indicate a problem. If you left click it will then highlight where the problem area is. To deselect that to deselect the point, we right click in the output window and left click on deselect. So if we zoom in here, you'll see there's a crossing brake line. As this is just a fairly rough gravel road, we can simply use the insert command from the vertex toolbar, click on the north south line, pick and accept, and click at the end of the other string. That will then create a new point on this string that has the same X, Y and Z value as the other string. We can now delete the diamond using the CAD delete toolbar and selecting string. Pick and accept on the diamond and we're going to bring our check break lines panel back up. Click check, replace and this time there's no errors. We can now finish on this panel. The next step prior to triangulating the data is to remove any empty models. As we're going to be triangulating a view, we don't want any models on the view that have no data in them. To do this, we select the option Models, Delete, Empty Models. Click on the arrow down button and you should see Unknown and X break lines. We simply click delete all, then finish. We're now ready to triangulate the data. Select the option TINS, create triangulate data. We'll type in TIN space ground for the function name and press enter. The new TIN name will just be ground and again press enter. Pressing enter both validates the fields that you've typed in, but also in this case pressing enter will automatically populate the model name. Preserve strings is the only thing you generally need ticked when you're processing a detail survey. We'll go to the data tab and we're going to pick view 1. So it's going to use all the tenable data in view 1. Now we should always have a boundary around the edge of the triangulation but in this case we don't have one yet so we're going to apply nulling and the nulling value will be 50 meters for the length and then we will null out some extra points on the edge and then create a boundary. So we can click triangulate now, go to your plus button and turn on tin ground. We'll just move the panel down at the bottom of the screen and we will come back to that when we've done our boundary. When you're 
trimming the triangles it's a very good idea to put the triangulation model to the back to do this we use the menu button walk right on models walk right on models to back and double click on tin ground it will then bring all of the strings to the front making it easier to see what should be deleted there are a number of options to null tins the ones we usually use on a simple job is tins null by points there is another option that is very useful where there are a lot of triangles to null and that's under tins null by string even if you were to use the null by string it's a good idea to have null by points active as well as this will help you undo any triangulations you've accidentally nulled so in both panels we're going to pick the tin ground firstly we'll look at the tin null by points here we click on pick and we pick in the middle of the triangle we want to null and accept you'll see the triangle has disappeared if we wanted to reinstate that triangle we click on the null mode change it to reset and again pick in the middle of where the triangle was and it'll bring it back again if you haven't already done so we'll also just toggle off the text again the way the strings work is that again we've picked the tin we're going to tick on null on accept of string and if you right click on the string pick icon and left click on polyline now keeping the mouse button left button held down we just simply drag a string through any triangle that you want to delete and release the cursor then click middle button so we're just going to pan around the edge looking for any triangles that need to be taken out up the top left there's some here as we've been in the pan mode we need to right click until we get back to the polyline prompt down the bottom left of the screen and you always drag from inside out so that way there's less chance of accidentally overlapping another triangle so middle click again we'll pan around a bit more we may take this one out you can also just zoom in and out if you like the good thing about the zooming in and out is that you don't have to exit out of the option so drag that one out drag that one you can even do a bit of a loop around there okay once you've got it pretty right um, there's another couple of useful things that we can look at firstly we're just going to pick a point in the middle and accept now it's nulled out a triangle but you can't actually tell which one it is so the way to check your nulling is to click on the toggle button and click on tin solid it will easily identify any problem areas and you can set your null mode back to reset click pick and pick in the middle and it'll bring the triangle back just turn off tin solid just to bring it back to the triangles once we're happy that the triangles have been trimmed we click finish on both of the nulling panels and we use the option tins boundary we select the tin which is ground the model name can be typed in here I'm just going to select the model tin ground and type space BDY at the end if we then type in comma one comma means turn on in number one view one okay we are simply going to click create and you should see now a cyan string running around the edge of your triangulation we can click finish on that panel and now we're going to tell the tin that that's the boundary so back in the retriangulate tin panel we go to the nulling tab we're going to delete all of the previous parameters that we typed in 
and we click on the null polygon pick icon and pick and ensure that you locate the boundary and accept and then click retriangulate. You'll now see that the triangles remain nulled inside that boundary. We're now going to finish on the retriangulate tin panel and once we've established that the triangulate triangles are going to the correct points we can then toggle on the contours. This will help you identify any problems that you may not have picked up when you did the original survey. To help analyse the triangulation a perspective view can be created. The surface can be shaded and viewed from any angles. So firstly we're going to create a new view using the option view new perspective open GL. If we go to the plus button we can turn on all the models click select and we'll just maximize this view. If we zoom out you'll see the triangular mesh along with the strings. There are some pipes if you use the orbit button and you hold the left button down we can orbit around and zoom in and have a look at the actual pipes. We can also shade the view by clicking on toggle shade. This is very useful in helping again to identify any problems, any spikes in the triangulation. One useful little tool is the ability to actually drive along a string. If we use the steering wheel icon, we can pick on the string to drive along icon, pick on the road crown, and click drive. You can right click anywhere in the screen to stop the drive. You can also tick on repeat so as you drive towards the end, as soon as you get to the end of the road it will then loop back to the start. Just right click on the screen and click finish. We can also create a section view which again is useful for analysing the survey. If we minimise our perspective view and we are going to, so we select view, new, section. If we click back in plan view 1 and select window tile vertical, it will put our plan view on the left and our section view on the right. In the section view we will turn on the model tin ground. We can click the profile icon and if we zoom in we can pick the crown of the road and accept. As we have a 10 times exaggeration it's quite steep. If we were to change that to say two times, you'll see the exaggeration is not quite so much now. As you in plan view one, we'll just turn off the tin ground and tin ground boundary and zoom out. As we move through the section view, you can see a yellow cross which represents where you are on the road. In the section view, if we were to turn on the model drainage pipe and if we zoom into the plan view here where the drainage pipe goes under the road, if we go along the section view, you'll see that it actually shows the pipe under the road. Again, it's an elliptical shape because we have the vertical exaggeration set to 2. If we change it to 1 and the pipe was fairly square to the road, then you'd see a good a nice circular shape. 